Um, well, the first reason is because if you're an animal, bigger is better. Okay, and it's better for a couple reasons. Number one, if you're bigger, it's hard to be eaten by things. So the blue whale, pretty large. Not many things can eat the blue whale. Okay, so once it dies, things can eat the blue whale. Okay, an orca could kill a baby blue whale. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not many things that could eat a blue whale because it's so big. Um, also, if you are large, you have a lot of different options of things to eat, correct? Whereas if you're small, like the little copepod that you looked at under the microscope, if you're that small, the, really the only option of what you, the only option for you to eat is all of the little phytoplankton, okay? So hypothetically speaking, the blue whale could eat anything it wanted, right? Because it's big, okay? So it has to be, mul so animals are multicellular to become larger. Well, why don't you see just like, animals that are just one single cell but are giant single cells, okay? Well, the reason for that is because there's actually a size limit on cells, okay? Cells can only get up to a certain size. Um, and the reason why they can only get up to a certain size is because of this thing called the surface area to volume ratio of the cell, okay? Do you know what surface area is? Geometry, yeah, ooh. Gosh. Yeah, length times width times height. Sorry, uh, that's volume, sorry. The length times the height. Um, it's basically the area on the surface, right? So the amount of area that's on the surface of the cell. Okay. Um, um, and then volume. Do you know what volume is? What? length times width times height, but it's the amount of space inside, right? Okay, so um, the ratio of the amount of surface area to the amount of volume, the space inside, actually affects how large cells can be, okay? And let's uh, look at three different cells that are different sizes and then talk about why that actually limits cell size, okay? So you can see the differences in the surface area to volume ratio. So our first cell, okay, let's say um, is one centimeter. So we're gonna say our cell's a cube, okay? Um, and so in order to find your volume of a cube, it's length times width times height, and it's one centimeter, so, and it's a cube, so each of them is one centimeter. So one times one times one is one centimeter cubed. So your volume, one centimeter cubed. Surface area is your length times height, one times one times six, because you have six sides on a cube, okay? So your surface area is six centimeters squared. You see that? So your ratio is six to one. Okay, and that's good, and we'll talk about why. Cell number two, so if you increase the size of a cell to two centimeters, okay, so you get two times two times two, eight centimeters cubed, your surface area is 24, so your ratio is three to one. You see that? Okay, and then if you increase it again to three centimeters, so you get 27 centimeters cubed, 54 centimeters squared, or two to one ratio. You see that? Okay, here's why this matters. Cells rely on diffusion in order to get oxygen and some nutrients and get rid of waste products like carbon dioxide, all right? Um, and do you guys remember what diffusion is? Okay, water passing through cells, um, that is a specific kind of diffusion called osmosis. The movement of water cell uh, molecules is osmosis, but diffusion is like the movement of pretty much everything else. So like, for example, if I sprayed a squirt of fruit at the front, okay, Alexis would be the first to smell it, okay? And then eventually, the perfume molecules would spread out and eventually Brandon at the back could smell it, okay? So diffusion is the movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration, okay? So it spreads out, okay? Osmosis is specifically water. So um, cells rely on diffusion. So they rely on the fact that there's you know, more oxygen outside of the cell than inside, so oxygen tends to move in, right? Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, so here's what these ratios mean. So if you have a small cell, okay, for every one unit of volume that's on the inside of the cell, you have six units of surface area on the outside of the cell. That means that if you have like a waste product in here on the inside of the cell, 
Okay, it's got six spots where it has the opportunity to diffuse out. Do you see that? Okay, um, if you have a large cell, okay, here's our big cell. For every one unit of volume, you've got two spots where that waste product, if it's in there, can diffuse out. Okay, you can kind of uh, compare this to like trying to get the whole school out through two doors. Right, have everybody you know, in one big mass say, okay, exit the building through these two doors. It's going to go slowly, right? It's not going to be very efficient, and it's going to get backed up, right? Whereas if you had, like, six doors that you could go through, it would happen much faster, right? And it would not back up as much. Yes? Okay, so that's, like, the same kind of idea with these cells. Okay, if they're smaller, you have a larger surface area to volume ratio, diffusion can happen much faster, and these cells are very efficient. Larger cells, not very efficient. And eventually, if you get too large, this doesn't, like, the ratio is too small, um, and it doesn't work. The cell dies. You can't get rid of waste products or get oxygen fast enough. Does that make sense? So cells are small. They have to be small in order to be efficient. But, okay, so it's beneficial for an animal to be, or for a cell to be small. But the problem is, is that for animals, they want to be large, right? And so they solve that problem by having many cells, multi, being multicellular. So they have lots of little cells um, that they put together to make a large animal. So animals are multicellular. Yeah. You're a bunch of cells, trillions and trillions of cells, lots of cells. So. Um, here's just a comparison between two cells or two animals. Okay, these are blob animals. Okay, so this is our blob animal that's multicellular, has lots of cells in it, and then this is our blob animal that's single celled. Okay, so if you compare the surface area to volume ratio here, um, organism B, okay, um, if you're to spread that cell out, okay, it only have like a certain amount of surface area. So it's got a fairly small surface area compared to the amount of volume inside. Whereas this one, okay, if you were to take each of these little cells and like spread them out and put all the surface area together, it'd have a much larger surface area, but the same volume as this one. So this one's much more efficient. Do you see that? Yes? Have I? Okay, reason number two why animals are multicellular, okay, is that the cells that make up the animal can specialize, okay? Um, so cells can specialize into different tissues or organ systems and make the whole organism more efficient. So think of it this way. Let's say um, my, I needed to do my job okay, as your teacher. And then I was also responsible for being the president of the United States. I was also responsible for doing Mr. Woodcock's job. I was also responsible for doing my husband's job. Okay, if I tried to do all of those jobs, I would be not good at any of them, right? They're very inefficient. I couldn't ever get anything done, okay? That would be bad. But if you specialize and you're an expert in one thing, right? I do my job as your teacher, President Obama is the president, Mr. Woodcock's the headmaster, and my husband does his job, then you're specialized, it runs much more efficiently, right? So in animals, okay, each of their cells specialize and do something and make the whole animal run much more efficiently, okay? Um, it's called division of labor, so different specialized cells carry out different um, tasks in an animal, all right? And here's why that's actually an advantage to an animal. Um, if you get a large group of animals or cells that grow together, they literally cannot function in the same way that a single cell can. Um, cells require a certain amount of surface area to get oxygen and get rid of waste. Okay? And so here's, again, our organism A that's multicellular and then you know our single cell. Uh, so our organism here, uh, these cells, in order to be able to get rid of their waste products and gain oxygen, need to be exposed to the environment. 
all right? Um, and the environment being everything outside of the animal. So if you look at this cell right here, is that cell exposed to the environment? No, it's not. So this cell, uh, if, it, if all of these cells in here were doing the same thing, this cell not exposed to the environment okay, on the inside of the cell, our animal, could not get rid of its waste products, could not get oxygen, and it would starve and die. Okay? But if you have cells that specialize, and some cells are responsible for bringing nutrients to the cells on the inside, then that will function much better. Okay? So a multicellular organism needs that specialization so that all the cells can survive. All right? Okay, so in multicellular organisms, um, in order to have efficient systems, you must have specialization of cells. Specialized cells are much more efficient at carrying out jobs. 